Okay, welcome back. Hope you had your cup of coffee. Uh, all right, I think someone has uh, added something here. Okay, that's very interesting. Um, and there's written, I like to eat slate pencils as a child, uh, but it wouldn't go. Then I started opposing every urge with the word of God and I was delivered. Glory to my master, he empowered me, I'm free. Amen. Well, that's, uh, I have, a, I have a, one of my relatives has a similar testimony. So uh, she was very anxious as a child and she used to bite her fingernails. So, you know, she's as close to me in my age, but she would continuously bite her fingernails. And uh, there was a period of time that, you know, she was just seeking the Lord for something else. And she was just, uh, she had kept herself for a couple of days, was fasting and praying and was just in the presence of the Lord. And after that point of time, she never experienced the urge to bite her nails. And she said she that was not even one of the prayers that she had, but just the, the uh, presence of God took away whatever anxiety that she felt, uh, you know, that would make her bite her nails. And now she doesn't bite her nails anymore. Yeah, so amazing. Thank you, Anita. That is a, that's a lovely testimony. Yeah, good. Okay, so we were we were looking at the third point of uh, healing and deliverance uh, coming as with, uh, uh, as a result of certain things we need to do through our active resistance, and we did look at how we need to resist the devil. The second action point that we need to look at is found in First Peter one thirteen. It says, "The therefore, gird up the loins of your mind." Be sober, rest your hope fully upon the grace that is to be brought to you at the revelation of Jesus Christ. Now, you know what this gird up the loins, oh, gird up the loins means, uh, I think, especially for those who, uh, you know, who, who don't belong to the Indian culture, you know, in India and a lot in the South, we, people wear long, robes and, and this was this this actually came by because even um wa warriors in in the times of the bible you know they would have long um uh, what what do you say they're not they have they have robes that that they would use and they would have to you know they would have to tie it up they bring it up and tie it so that they could run right and you ca cannot run with a flowing robe that's there so you gird it you actually bring it out and you gird it and uh, if you see you know especially in south indian movies you will find that you know as soon as uh, the the hero wants to fight someone the first thing that he will do is he will pull up his lungi it's called a lungi he pull up his lungi and he will tie it and then he goes to fight so gird up your loins means in a sense of being prepared being prepared to to do the fighting so over here it's saying gird up the loins of your mind that means be prepared get ready become watchful be there to fight whatever is coming with the enemy and it says be sober and rest your hope fully upon the grace that is to be bought so how you gird up your loins is being prepared to ensure that you resist the enemy and being in a place of sobriety. Sobriety means being able to stand in what God wants you to do. So these are those two action points that the more that you get to a place of uh, offense, okay, it's not defense, it's offense where you're going ahead of the attack, of the temptation, of the need to think those thoughts, of the need to open that door to habitual sin is you going into that action step going to that offense and being prepared to fight so that your uh, you know and through doing so your healing comes by so we're, what we're, so what we've just presented here are three specific pointers for our healing and deliverance the first we spoke of was um, what happens as a result of our regular consecration, our regular sanctification, 
or our healing and deliverance that comes just with the presence of God, just with the anointing of God. And we looked at how we can actively resist. Now, we also want to bring about some things we can do by praying or by, by bringing, um, coming together in Jesus' name. Now, there are a couple of points that if you would look down in the notes, you would see around 14 points that are there. Now, even as we're going to do, you know, go through this, remember, this is not like a like an equation or a formula that you have to do it step by step or you know one after the other and it's not even necessary that you need to do all of them but the idea the understanding is to apply this situation wherever uh, in whatever situation you are or apply to every uh, to 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 a person that may be involved the these points is why we focus on this is to ensure that we're keeping the the house tidy and the house clean okay so we we need like we said it is important for us to engage in that uh, place where we are bringing about healing and deliverance for yourself especially when you know there may be certain areas that need to be washed out that need to be completely cleansed that uh, that becomes you know that slightly gets open to the to the enemy so we do these uh, points and if, if if we're looking down at the points that are one to fourteen points, we're just going to be looking at the first four points today, and we will take the rest up next week. But uh, you know, the first ten points are things that we do as we engage in prayer, and uh, points uh, the the last four points are the ones that require changes in us that require transformation in in the way that we live our lives so that our healing can be maintained. Uh, or on and on okay and after uh, these points there's also a time of prayer that we can engage in at this point of time so that you know we apply what we are we are learning and we receive our healing right here and now as we go through our prayer so um, even as maybe i'm praying or you know someone else is probably praying that there are a lot of um, there are some prayers that have been noted down in the notes. If someone's praying, you can use your own words also to pray. Okay, so let's review the first uh, four points, and um, we can take each one. We can we can even pray as long. It's a, there are sample prayers over that are, that are given here, which can be used. And of course, you're more than uh, uh, more than welcome to you know. Uh, um, Say say it in your own language, or or uh, maybe in. Let's review this. Um, the first point that we're looking at is to come to a place of repentance. Okay, now we all know that repentance is like a turning away from uh, the life that is the life or that area in your life that is ruled by sin, to up an area that is characterized by uh, submission and obedience to God. So, uh, and even as your uh, certain areas come to your mind, remember that the Holy Spirit, maybe as we're talking and as we're sharing right now, the Holy Spirit is the one who brings, uh, convicts us of some areas that we may be in sin and convicts us to a place of repentance. So repentance is what we know is a, sincere turning away uh, and that is in 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 your minds in your hearts you're turning away from yourself to god and this involves uh, a, a change of your heart a change of mind which leads to some kind of an action it is the turning away from us from a sinful cause to god so a a person someone who is truly repentant definitely recognize that god is the most important factor one in the life of the individual okay so recognizing what is wrong and turning away from it and you're also and when you're doing that you are also choosing to turn to god and his ways okay so as we see in isaiah 55 6 to 8 these are uh, what's written on uh, in your notes okay just to just to quickly read that out seek the lord while he may be found 
call upon him while he is near. Let the wicked forsake his ways and the unrighteous man his thoughts. Let him return to the Lord and he will have mercy on him and to our God for he will abundantly pardon. So knowing that there is an area of sin can you excuse me? Yeah. So there is an area of sin in our lives and we come to a place of um, uh, returning to the Lord. Because when we do that, we know that we have mercy from him and uh, from him will come pardon. Okay. So I, I just want to take maybe a minute or two of um, just some quietness for you to put down or write down any thoughts that that you may any kind of wrong thoughts or any patterns of habitual thoughts that you you engage in or things that you keep believing about yourself that is in true contrast to god's word okay or uh, or also think of some things that you have said about yourself you know words of defeat, words of death, words of shame, words of uh, um, uh, words of hate towards yourself. If there's anything that you can remember that you've said, you know, you even things like, and I'm I'm not going to do, I'm not going to be anyone. I can't do this. Um, you know, I will never succeed in this. Those words, those kind of statements that you make, where you say never, always, ever. You know, that. So uh, um, just spend some time to think if there is something like that you've engaged in and, you know, take a pen and a paper um, and write that down. Or if there is any kind of a habitual sin that you are engaging in right now, whatever it may be, it could be something that the spirit convicts you about, put that down. Or it can be even your, uh, uh, your involvement in any kind of practices, any... Uh, occult practices, any kind of false practices that you know is is not uh, uh, in line with God's word, and whatever it it can mean, something as as believing in a superstition, or um, it could be you know reading a horoscope, or uh, looking at the stars, or uh, you know maybe some things that that may not may, you may have not even thought of as as. Uh, as occultic or as evil or even you know chanting some kind of a maybe a word or a prayer or something that you've probably been used to uh, anything anything that you feel you've involved in something that's false or something that's occultic put that down let's take a minute to do that just giving you all and this you do it on your own you don't don't please do not put it up on the chat this is something that is just between you and god because we are receiving our healing and deliverance so just take around 30 seconds to to do that and um i'd like to pray uh, together with you all as we as we submit this and repent and confess uh what we have been engaged in okay 30 seconds
okay um let's just take time to just pray and uh, uh i think even as i'm praying you know um I'm, I'll, I'll probably give some space in between so that you could, it, wherever you are, just uh, take some time to pray uh, on your own, confessing specifically. You know, specify what is it that uh, that that you are you're confessing. Be specific about your confession also, and and you know those thoughts um, uh, that you are aware of, or those words that you're aware of. So so specify that. Um, uh, uh, even even as I'm praying, okay, I'll probably leave a few seconds of gap so that you could do that. Let's pray, Heavenly Father. We thank you that we can come to you at your throne of grace right now, Father. We come in confession, Lord. Lord, we confess and we repent of every thought that we have engaged in that has been outside of your thoughts for us. Lord, we, and we know, we read that the thoughts you have for us is far more glorious than the thoughts we think about ourselves. We come to you and confess and repent of every negative thought, of every thought that has been filled with self-pity, with self-loathing, with self-condemnation, we come to you and ask you, Lord, to forgive us for engaging in us, engaging in that. Father, we pray, Lord, very specifically for thoughts that, that harm ourselves, harm our spirits, harm our souls. Lord, the thoughts that we think of about who we are, Father, and all of this, we recognize a sin. We confess and we repent that, Lord. I'm just going to give you a couple of seconds to do this in your own words specifically to confess and repent on the thoughts that are specific to you. So take this time to make that confession and repent. Lord, we confess and we repent of all the words that we've spoken against ourselves, those prophecies that we have said over ourselves, those negative, those harmful prophecies that we declare of ourselves, the way that we've inflicted ourselves with wrong words and comments, Father, which we may have heard as a result of our past, that continues to play in our minds. Father, I come against all of that, Father, and we, we confess it, Lord, right now in Jesus' name. We confess and we bring before you, Lord, our hearts and say we are sorry for how loosely we have used those words against ourselves. And right now, just words that are coming to my mind are failure, you know, certain words that people may have called you that have been derogatory. You know, and there, there could be words like dumb, idiot, stupid, all of that that we've heard and that we replay over ourselves. Lord, we confess this. We repent. I'd like you to take some time to specifically bring the words that you have spoken over your life and ask the Lord or come to the Lord with repentance, confessing it. Lord, we come to you and confess, Lord, and repent over the sins that we participate in, over that which we know keeps us away from you. 
Father, whether it be the sin in the mind, in our thoughts, in our words, or in our deeds, we come to you and we truly repent. We confess that we have hurt you, that we have pained your heart from engaging in things that have kept us away from you. We confess and we repent. Lord, we confess any form of gossip that we have engaged in, slander, malice, pornography, any kind of sexual addictions, thoughts that have been defiling, acts that have been defiling to our own bodies and our own minds, pictures, images that we've replayed in our minds. We pray, we confess and we repent. We turn away from our ways. We look to you. I'd like you to take some time yourself to specify any specific sin that the Holy Spirit is convicting you in. Lord, we confess and we repent over practices we've engaged in. Even if we've done it inadvertently, without our knowledge, without our understanding, we confess and repent. If there are articles in our homes that we've kept, if there are practices we've engaged in, in the past, if we've gone trusting in superstitions, in old wives' tales, Lord, we repent. Lord, we confess that we have done that which is displeasing to you. When we have looked at hope to something else other than you, thinking they will save us, Lord, we repent. Lord, when we've kept objects as good luck charms or some things that we carry around instead of our faith and our devotion to you, Father, we confess and we repent. Take this time to specify anything any practice or any kind of a false religion you've engaged in and repent and come to a place of confession. Okay. We we'll move on to the second point that we look in after we confess and repent. It is to ask the Lord for forgiveness. We know that when we ask him, he is quick to forgive us. And we read, read in so many scripture around us that all that we need to do is believe and confess and ask for forgiveness. And he has mercy on us that he he, the way that he demonstrates his love to us is by, by taking away the sin. Whatever we've confessed today in, the, in this last five minutes, you know, he's taken away that sin and redeemed us. So we come to a place of asking for forgiveness and asking and that, that, the, that the blood of Jesus cleanses us from whatever we have confessed and we have repented of. Okay? We see it in scripture. It says, when we walk in the light, First John 1, 7 and, verse, uh, 7 and verse 9, says, if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Okay, So let's just take this time 
to ask for forgiveness. We just, we spend some time repenting and confessing. Uh, now we will just come. I know I'm just breaking it up just so that, you know, we can be in the presence of God and through the healing, even as we are, we are doing this. Okay. Let's just pray once again. Heavenly Father, we thank you that your word says when we confess you are faithful, you are just to forgive us. You desire, Lord, to give us forgiveness. And Lord, we confess and we've repented of things that we've engaged in, thoughts that we've had, words we've spoken, deeds we've done, false things we've believed in, held on to as anchor. Father, we pray. We ask for your forgiveness. Lord, we believe that you died for us to take away our sin. And we come to you knowing that what we have placed over the, on the cross, Father, you have redeemed us, you have given us, you have exchanged it, Lord, for our life and for our freedom and for our joy. Forgive us, Lord. We want to be in right standing with you. We pray for the empowering of your Holy Spirit to, Lord, to not just um, forgive ourselves, but to receive this forgiveness from you. You have gladly given it to us, Lord. You hold nothing back, Master. We thank you. We thank you that you have brought us to a place of rightness with you. You have clothed us with your righteousness. Even as we've confessed and repented, you have taken away our sins as far as the east is from the west. So far have you removed our iniquities from us. We praise you. We thank you for forgiving us. In Jesus' name, amen. The third thing we understand and we look at is now it is a believing and receiving what Christ did for us on the cross. Now this is the only one and only reason why you and I can be made free and be made whole and be made well. You know, just because of what he did for us on the cross. And we continue in this journey knowing that because of the cross, we do not have to be, do not have to succumb to the, the place of sin. Okay. If when we look at uh, Isaiah chapter 53, verses 4 and 6, and I, and I just want to read that out, it says, Surely he has borne our griefs and carried our sorrows. Yet we esteemed him stricken, smitten by God, and afflicted. Verse 6, all we like sheep have gone astray. We have turned everyone to his own way, and the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. Now, because of what he did on the cross, all that we just confessed and repented and spoke about right now is something that he has borne for us. He has carried uh, for us. And he was stricken, he was smitten, he was afflicted on the cross. So because of that work for us, we are let free or we have our freedom because he took the iniquity of it all. And Ephesians 1, 7 also says, in him we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins according to the riches of his grace. It's not the intensity or the, or the level of what we've done that forgiveness gets meted out to us, but because of what, of the shed blood of the Lamb, because of the shed blood of Jesus. And it is only because of that, that you and I have redemption. Uh, you and I have freedom for that. Okay. So let's, let's again, just take some time to pray and um, uh, come to a place of declaring what he has done for us on the cross and declaring that we have been cleaned and washed and redeemed by the blood of Jesus, knowing that it is only because of what he did on the cross that we have been made complete, made whole, 
uh, that that whatever he suffered and whatever he went through brought about our healing and our wholeness okay and we will what we will also do is to declare some areas that you need healing and deliverance for okay so you can take this time to speak and pray over those areas and declare the work of the finished cross um, uh, over your lives okay so let's let's just take some time to pray thank you heavenly father we thank you for the cross we thank you we thank you lord we believe that on the cross you took away every one of our sins you suffered you were afflicted you were smitten you were bruised you took every burden and curse of of our of our sins upon yourself so that we could be set free we believe what you did on the cross bought our wholeness we believe what you did on the cross made us free gave us joy brought about our wellness and our wholeness lord we we know that we because of what who we believe in because of what you did for us on the cross because of our redemption lord we stand washed we stand cleaned we stand sanctified we stand consecrated you have made us holy because of what you have done on the cross you have washed and cleansed our thoughts you have washed and cleansed our words our mouths you have washed and cleansed our attitudes our deeds our behavior you have purchased the price of it all and we stand declaring that what we have in you and because of the cross has bought us our freedom so you can take some time to specify some areas of your life that you want healing and deliverance and stand in belief for of what Christ has done for you Lord I just come again so I'm just led in my spirit to pray for a few things Lord we just come against strife that is in relationships that creates a lack of peace in our hearts Father you came to give us freedom to give us joy Lord to build your togetherness and your your unity Lord in our homes Lord I pray master we believe that you have taken away everything that keeps us bondaged to places of strife and disunity and disharmony we exchange your joy for for all that comes against us you can take time again to pray or if any of you feel led to pray for something that the holy spirit is putting in your hearts uh, you could unmute and pray something that god's put in your heart some specific area that may not necessarily apply to you but you sense that applies to somebody maybe in the room somebody in the call uh please unmute yourselves and you can pray for somebody else you don't have to call out the name if you know who that is for you could just call out what the issue is and pray exercise what god's given you and pray
Lord, we just come against anyone who experiences mistrust towards somebody else. That there is this feeling of doubts and paranoia that keeps engaging them. Father, we know that you have brought about healing in these areas. A place where they're not able to delegate to somebody else, but takes on extra pressure by taking on more things, fearing that it wouldn't be done well, or fearing that that they cannot trust another individual. Lord, we release your healing power and your deliverance from a mindset or an attitude such as this that may create, again, hardships in that relationship. Lord, we pray, God. Lord, because of the work of what you've done for us, Lord, for what you've done for us on the cross, that you will release your peace, your shalom, your faith over this individual. Lord, I come against thoughts that are repetitive. Lord, we come against, Lord, those obsessive thoughts that keep lingering over and over again that does not allow us to focus on the things of God. Lord, to whoever this may apply to, Father, I pray, Lord, by the freedom you have given this individual on the cross, Lord, I, I ask that they be healed, delivered from obtrusive, thoughts from thoughts that are repetitive and obsessive. Lord, we break these chains because of what you've done for us, Lord. They are called free, every bondage, every chain. Lord, we break right now in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, we'll go on to... Um, the last point uh, here, which, uh, which is to be able to release forgiveness. Uh, in your journey, we know that there can be people who have hurt. They've caused you some pain and some things that stay deep within. They may be people who you're still living with and are those who you may be seeing over and over, uh, day after day. But our healing also comes when we release forgiveness to not just ourselves, but also to those around. Matthew 6, 12 says, Forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. For if you forgive men their trespasses, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. But if you do not forgive men their trespasses, neither will your Father forgive your trespass. Okay? So we will take some time to, um, to receive healing, not just for what has happened to you because of the experience you've gone through that has hurt you, but also to release forgiveness to someone else, to that person who has hurt you. And also receive healing for any disappointment and rejection that you've had um, for those who, um, for, for any kind of expectations that have not been, that have gone unmet. Okay, so I'm, I'm just going to lead us again through the prayer. The prayer is there uh, on the notes and I'm going to refer to that because there are a couple of things there. So if you want, you could also do that alongside with me or just close your eyes and just be in the presence of God and 
ask the Lord to bring forth to you people in your life who have hurt you. And I'd suggest right now, maybe in that paper and pen, write those names down, whoever the Holy Spirit is bringing to your mind, write those names down and submit to the Lord and ask um, that he gives you the power to forgive and that you will be able to release forgiveness to them in turn, whether they have hurt you intentionally or unintentionally. Okay? Let's just take time to pray. Lord, Lord Jesus, we just come to you and we thank you because you have brought us to this moment where just you and us are here, each of us in our own spaces. Lord, we pray that you will release your healing over those events that we've gone through in our lifetimes those experiences that have been unexpected, that have been sudden. Lord, that we may not even have had a choice over. Lord, we pray, God, for your healing. Lord, we just call upon your healing over those who've been abused as children, over those who've been violated as young adults, those who've been bullied as young people, those who've been made fun of, been teased for their abilities, for their looks, for their status, for their stature. Lord, we ask that you release your healing right now. Lord, we pray for those homes who've grown up through negative experiences, where there have been wrong models, where there's been compromises in the way a family has been led. Lord, if, if there have been anyone who've been victims of violence, Lord, of divorce and separation, children who've come out of single parenting, who've come out of significant economic crisis. Lord, for where there has been physical ill health, where they've grown up in homes or been in homes where there has been mental health concerns, Lord, we release your healing. Where people would have grown up in environments where there have been constant fights and quarrels, physical violence, grown up in homes where there's been poverty, Lord, there's been lack. Father, we release your healing over each one of us. I'd like you to take some time to specify anything that has hurt you and brought you pain. Specify it and receive your healing right now. Lord, we come to you and we pray that we will release those who we've held captive in anger, in bitterness, in, in pain, in our hurt, those who we haven't released, those people who've hurt us and said, done things to us, Lord, we release them from our own clutch, Father. We do not want to hold on to them. They have no power over us. We release the bitterness, the anger, the pain, the struggles, the fear we feel towards them. 
we release it and we declare and we ask that you give us the power to forgive so that we can extend mercy to them as you have extended mercy to us. Lord, when we consider what you've done for us, Lord, for how you've forgiven us, how much more are we in places to release our brothers or our sisters who've sinned against us? Teach us, Lord, to release. You can take some time to specify or mention people whom you would specifically like to release. Lord, we also take this time to receive healing for disappointments or rejections we have felt because of expectations that haven't been met. Lord, we would have walked into places and relationships thinking of a lot, expecting a lot, but been rejected and hurt over and over again. Lord, this has caused us emotional pain and hurt. We receive your healing in these areas. And Lord, that we will look to you only to be satisfied. You will be the fount which fulfills all our thirst and our hunger. And we would look to no other, Father. Lord, we also release forgiveness to those who've hurt us, to those who have not stood according to their promises or stood according to their words. We release them. We take them away. We, we unbind them, Lord, from our minds and from our, from our hurts and from our pains. We release and ask that the love of God fill us so that we can love them in return. I'm speaking especially to homes where in marriages, where there's been a lot of expectations that you've had walking into marriage or expectations you've had of your children. Just to find out and to come to a place that a lot of them go unmet. I call to those of you who, who are in that space today to release them, forgive them, have your healing, ask the Lord to heal you, to take away that rejection and pain you felt and commit to seeking the Lord as your provider for everything. If there are people you would like to release and call out as you pray, please go ahead, take this time to do that. Lord, we come to you, Father, and ask that we will, that, that you will heal us from things, Lord, that we have engaged in, from mistakes we've made, from choices that we've made, that has brought us into wrong consequences to. Father, we pray that you will heal us from those, Lord. Lord, from places we've been in our foolishness, in our immaturity, where we have not sought you at the right time and done and chosen the wrong things. We pray for your forgiveness. We pray for your healing. Lord, we also pray that we will learn and we will be in a place to forgive ourselves for the mistakes we've made, for the choices we've, we've made. Lord, we know that we are in you, that we are sanctified by you, that we are righteous in you. And Lord, when you look at us, as your precious children. Lord, may we not condemn ourselves. Lord, we pray that we will stand in the boldness knowing that we are washed and cleansed and redeemed by you. 
that we are loved by you, we are chosen by you, we are called your own. And if you look at us with such pride and such joy, Father, may we never make the mistake to look at ourselves otherwise, but to look at ourselves through your word. Thank you for the worth that you have built in us. Thank you for the value that you have purchased for us. Thank you for the cross that brings about our healing, that brings about our deliverance, our wholeness. We are ever grateful to you, Heavenly Father. We speak in joy and we thank you. Just like to spend a minute just to thank God, just come to a place of gratitude and thank God before we close. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Thank you for the cross. Thank you for your love. Thank you for healing us. Thank you, Lord, for taking away everything, Lord, that is not of you. Thank you for bringing us to a place of wholeness and freedom in you. Holy Spirit, we just give you praise. We give you glory. We thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. To you be all glory. To you be all power. To you be all, all honor. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. All right. Thank you so much for joining in today. I truly hope that, you know, just through this time of prayer, that each of us have been blessed and walk in freedom. You know, we all have freedom and let's walk in that. Okay. God bless. We'll meet you next week. God bless. Thank you, Pastor. Thank you so much. Thank you. Bye-bye.